So I'm going to leave out some of the more detailed parts. So basically, I just want to explain why a company does an IPO, initial public offering. Some of the other slang expressions associated with this are going to the street. Going to the street means Bay Street or Wall Street. So it means listing your stocks so people can publicly buy them. So a public company is a slang expression to describe a company where the public can buy shares. Now, private companies can also sell shares, but there's a limited circumstance. In some jurisdictions, like Canada, for example, you can have no more than 30 or in some other jurisdictions, 50 shareholders. So if you've got 75 people owning little bits and parts of your company, you can't do that. You have to list your shares publicly. So let's talk about what is involved in listing your shares publicly and why you might want to do that. Let's say you have a small company growing. You open up a Winnipeg office and a Vancouver office and things are going along just fine. But you want to have some more money to expand. And the money that you're getting from sales is okay to sustain you and even grow a little bit, but not a lot. And the original people that started off the company have already put in as much as possible. So how do you get some additional money? Well, one of the things you do is write a prospectus, which is a fancy word for a big, huge business plan. And that involves engaging a lawyer and a CA. And then you list that prospectus with this stock exchange. In Canada, for example, would be the Toronto Stock Exchange. And then once that listed, then you can take it to the street, meaning you can then send out invitations for people to buy your stock. And here's a very simplistic way of how it works, okay? So what you do is you think about how much your company is worth. You add up uh, all the stuff you have in inventory, any real estate you might have, uh, any of the outstanding invoices, and you figure, okay, our company's maybe worth $10 million. So you could start off saying, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one million shares available at a price of $10 a share, and you just launch it at that, right? And you hope that people will buy, and in the process of the competition for buying, the share price will rise, especially if you do some continued good things with your business, and it goes $11, 12, 15, 20. So let's say it gets up to $20 a share. You also, as the original owner of the company, would exercise an option to keep back some shares for yourself. You wouldn't let all the million shares be out there completely. You might say, well, I'm going to keep back about, you know, say 300,000 or 400,000 for myself. Now remember, the shares launched at $10 a share. So if you have 400,000 shares, what's 400,000 times 10? Four million, right? So you're a little bit under half of the company. The company's worth about, say, 10 million in the beginning. So you got four million. But once the share price goes to 20 bucks a share, you're starting to think to yourself, well, I got 400,000 shares. What if I sold 100,000 shares? So you sell 100,000 shares times 20 bucks a share, you got 2 million bucks. Now you could take that 2 million bucks and go to Uptown Fine Motors and buy yourself a Ferrari and you know, spend some bling on your trophy wife and big cottage and stuff like that. Or you could use that to open up an office in Calgary, branch office in New York City, et cetera, et cetera get some really pimping search engine optimization, sell online, et cetera, and then make a lot more money. As you make a lot more money, the product grows and your branding increases, the share price goes up even higher. 25, 30, 35, 40, 50 dollars. So it gets up to 50 dollars and you say, wow, there's a lot of demand for our product, but we can't keep pace with production. So I need to put more into the company. So now I'm down to 300,000 shares. I'm gonna sell another 100,000 shares at 50 dollars a share. That's going to get me another five million bucks. So I can take that another five million bucks and spend it again on further advancing and expanding. The share price might go 55, 60, 75, 80, 100 dollars a share. So now you sell another 100,000 shares, right? At 100 dollars a share. So you got yourself 10 million, right? And spend that on expanding and expanding. Now you're down to around about 100,000 a share, 100,000 shares left. And you're thinking to yourself, I better just kind of pause right there. Because as your company starts to get a great reputation, then other people are going to start buying the shares in larger quantities. So instead of people having shares, a couple thousand here and 10,000 shares, there, there may be some institutional investors or mutual fund guys or other people like that start to buy hundreds of thousands of shares. So if they get to a situation where they can get several hundred thousand shares, they don't need to have 50% of the company. All they need is a significant amount compared to what you have left and they'll show up at the annual general meeting, and you're standing up the front there giving a speech about what happened in 2014, and they interrupt and say, 
Yeah, we have a motion from the floor. We want to elect a new board of directors. You go, who the hell are you? Well, I own 300,000 shares, 300,000 votes, and uh, that's more than what you got, and you're no longer president. That's the fundamentals of a leveraged buyout. That's how you could lose control of your own company. Thank you.